60 years ago, some planes were fast enough to be nudging the sound barrier, and the battle to go through it began. Contrary to Hollywood myth, it was a two-cornered fight between an American pilot, Chuck Yeager, and a British boffin, Dennis Bancroft. Both knew about the problems of exceeding Mach 1. It was common knowledge. Shock waves would jam the controls, and the plane would go out of control. They were finding that uh, with Spitfire, when it dived, it dived very fast and they found that a number of pilots couldn't pull out and they just crashed. So, in the war, Bancroft was asked by the British government to design a jet-powered plane that would break the sound barrier. It was extremely powerful. You're accelerating at an embarrassing speed. <laughs> it was called the Miles 52 and things were going well for the British. But then, enter the Americans. In uh, the autumn of 44, we were told that if we gave them all the information we knew, in three weeks' time we would be going to America and they would tell us all the information that they had gathered. But after a week, we got a message through that the Pentagon would not permit anybody from England for security reasons. So the door was closed, bang. We had supplied them with all this information. We were expecting information back. We got absolutely nothing. So the Americans nicked our research. And then the British government, for reasons that have never been explained, cancelled the Miles 52 project and confiscated all the equipment. Jaeger had a clear run. He'd spent the war earning his reputation as a fighter jock. In a single day, he once shot down five German planes. After the war, Jaeger came back to America a hero. And to reward him, they sent him here, to this featureless, bleak, windswept, dried-up lake bed in the high desert of California. He must have been pleased. But it was here that he met the Bell X-1, America's rocket-powered attempt at the sand barrier. On October the 14th, 1947, he was dropped from the belly of a bomber. And moments later, onlookers heard something no one had ever heard before. A sonic boom. Jaeger had done it. But it wasn't the rocket power that got him past Mach 1. It was how they stopped the shockwaves jamming the controls. And that was down to the X-1's clever rear wing, the horizontal stabilizer. If I could just have a minute of your time on that. Um, ordinarily, I wouldn't be that bothered about the back wings on a jet fighter. But you see, on a normal slow plane, there's a little flap here that goes up and down. But on a supersonic plane like this Lightning, the shot wave comes barreling down the side and jams it and then you crash and die and it's all very ugly. Finding out that the whole wing had to move like it's doing now, that was the discovery, that was the key that got Jaeger through the sound barrier. But was it, as he claims, the Americans that thought of it? Of course not. They hadn't got a clue about moving tailplanes. We had the actual wing being test flown on a, a low-speed aircraft in 1943. He's right. This footage, taken four years before Jaeger broke the sound barrier, shows a British plane with a movable wing. The same thing was fitted to the Miles 52, so would it have gone faster than sound? Without a shadow of doubt, um, it would have gone through the sound barrier. Oh, well. Never mind, Dennis. The Americans may have punched a hole in the sound barrier. <laughs> I don't want to be too angry. But we're the ones who go through it with style.